And now we'll log in to Data Color Match Textile. It opens up to a login box, and we can put in the default username, which is DCI with no password. Uh, the usernames can be altered or added, uh, depending on which parts of the program you want to access. Uh, the same usernames will be used for the Data Color Tools program. When you purchase Data Color Match, you get uh, Data Color Tools as well. So we'll click OK. And once you get inside the program, it comes up to Tips of the Day. Uh, this tells you about some of the features and uh, some tutorials on how to use the software. So if we click on Tell Me More, it will open up the screen and we can go up to setting up the feature points. So these are each of the feature points that um, are in Match Textile and we usually sell these feature points in groups of five. So we can, um, you can come in and you can test out the feature points and decide which ones you might need. We can close here and close here. Um, then we're on the main screen of Match Textile. And most of the screen on the left-hand side, uh, fiber, fiber group affinity, quality style, substrate delivery, is all involved in putting in your substrate. And then we have dye process, which is linking your substrate to your colorant set. And your colorant set is your groups of dyes that you use to dye different fibers or qualities. And inside each colorant set is our dye stuff or colorants. Uh, above this, we have our ribbon bar. And if you hover over each of the buttons on the ribbon bar, it will tell you what they are. So we have calibration, smart match. We have uh, calibration of the instrument, calibration of the monitor. And then above this, we have drop downs from file to go to different areas of the program, tools, uh, different options, import, export, instrument, uh, calibrate, instrument setup, uh, window, uh, how you want to display the windows, and language. Uh, these are the various languages that Match Textile is available in. And then you have Help, where this is where you can turn back on your Match Textile tips if you need to. Uh, there's a manual involved in there, a reference manual under Help Topics, and About Match Textile. And this is where you can go to check your version number of Match Textile. Okay, And also display the license. Okay, so, so once we have that, um, we'll know that most of these buttons are involved in setting up the system. So once the system's set up, about 95% of the time, you'll go into Recipe. And you notice that this button's a little bit bigger than some of the other buttons because it is used more. So we'll click on Recipe. And in Recipe, we'll see our list of recipes on the right-hand side and the folder that is highlighted. So right now, it's the top folder is DCI, and that will be uh, the name of that folder will be what you log in as. So we logged in as DCI, so that's the top folder. But you can also store things in sub and folders and subfolders listed here. Okay, so and it puts our recipes in by modification date. So the most recent recipe is at the top here, the V Aqua. Um, and again, along here, the the button bar. If you hover over each one of the buttons. It will tell you what they are, calibration, matching, and again, we have the drop-downs for file, recipe, tools, and, and other things, and help. Uh, what we're going to be concerned with now is matching a new recipe. So we'll go in through the button Match up here on the toolbar. Let me click on the Match icon. Okay, and, and what we're going to do is choose first the style that we're going to do our matching on. So if we click th the three dots on the right here, we can browse from the styles that we, um, that we might want to match on. So say, for example, we wanted to match on cotton bleached. Okay, click there. And we have available, actually we have Levifix SB Soda and we have Remazol SPB. Uh, silicate. I believe this is a pad dyeing dye set. So let's say we wanted to use the Remazol SPB silicate. So we double click 
to bring that down into the used die sets portion. Um, up here at the right, incidentally, is combined process. Combined process is where you have you you achieve a recipe, but not just the dyes themselves, but also the steps in the recipes. For example, your process steps or the chemicals that you may add to a recipe can be added in combined process. And that's one of the features that can be turned on and off dependent on the points that you have purchased. Okay, so we've checked um, selected Remazol SPB. So now we can go down and we could measure in a standard. We'd have to click in the left-hand corner here and make uh, the green input button uh, highlighted. And we'd type in the name of our standard. And then there's a button over on the right for measuring that standard. Uh, in this case, though, we are going to browse for our standard. We're going to click on the bottom three dots on the right here. And we have some demo data listed in here. So if we highlight and then type in V, we'll see many of our demo colors in here. So I'm going to start with V Cherry. We click on V Cherry and then click OK. So it shows us the representation of that color. And over on the right here, we have customers. So we could select a customer, and it would um, put in the settings that we would use for that customer, such as the illuminance, um, the metamerism uh, values, and that kind of thing um, for each customer, and assign the settings for that customer. Uh, those can be put in for each customer. We'll just leave that blank for right now. Um, Another good feature here is the offset. So say we didn't like um, or we wanted to use vCherry, but we wanted it to be vCherry and we wanted it to be 1DL darker. So we could click on DL1 and apply. And now it creates a new color as VL Cherry with a DL of negative 1 there. Okay, um, that, that might be worthwhile is if... Um, in your lab, you matched a color and it came out uh, lighter in production. So you could make this standard darker and send down a formula that would work uh, for production, uh, be closer for production. So we're going to go back and I'm going to just use the regular V cherry in this case. And uh, now we're going to go to die set. So die set is where we can uh, select our die stuff to match our color. So without matching or selecting any die stuff, it will select them all. But we have a number of ways of selecting dies. So for example, if we wanted to select something, we've got different parameters that we put in for these dies. So let's say we wanted a wash fastness of greater than 4. So what we could do here is put in a greater than 4 and click on Accept Limits. And what it would do is select everything except uh, below um, 4 or below. So here it did not select our Remazol Golden RNL. Okay, So that's one way to select things. We can take that out or click 0, 1 to select or deselect. We can also create groups of die stuff. So say we, we've got dies that we always use, and we'll call this our, our workhorse dies, okay? Our dies that we always would like to use. So we can select these dies and click on the green up here, and we can create a group called workhorse and save. So what's that's done now, if I click on zero and now, I zero out all the dies, and I can browse, and I can select my workhorse from my list of dies here. And now I have workhorse dies. Okay. So, so now we can move on to settings to see how we want to display our match. Okay. We've got number of die stuff in recipe two to three. So we could go up to to two to nine die or ten die stuff in a recipe if we wanted to. But 2 to 3 is normally what most people use, um, up to 15 recipes to display. 
whether we want to do a normal match or lab smart match or production smart match. Normal match uses just the primaries to get its match, and then lab smart match uses the primaries plus whatever historical data you have uh, accumulated during your color matching. Okay. Um, here is where we talked about user settings, where we had different customers. We could set up user settings for different customers, and that way it would select them automatically from that front page. We wouldn't have to select them back on this page as well. So over here is very important, uh, the illuminates that you might want to select. So we've got D65, maybe for a secondary illuminate we want F2 10 degrees, which is cool white fluorescent. And then after that, maybe uh, A, 10 degrees. And um, then we want to make sure that we optimize on metamerism, meaning that we don't just get the best match under the first illuminate, but we optimize for recipes that are the best metamerism for all three light sources. Okay, so we're going to optimize for DE and metamerism. Okay, so at this point, we can do calculate and it will show us a list of recipes here and um, we can see the DE uh, that it shows for each one okay um, and you see that the one with the lowest DE um, for D65 is not first just because it's optimizing on metamerism this one has a better metamerism than the second one here as we can see now it's showing us DE and metamerism and FO2 and A, but we can also show many other things in this uh, recipe table. So if we right click and do view configuration, we can add things to this recipe table. So maybe we want um, the LAB, or maybe we want, and maybe we want price and sensitivity and total, total concentration, maybe two illuminate banks instead of just one. Um, color constancy indexes. So how color constant is the uh, recipe going to be over the two, um, the three light sources. Okay, um, and maybe dye stuff compatibility index. Okay, so if, if we click these on, if we click OK, we'll see that each one of these gets added to our list in the recipe table. And what's nice about this is that you can sort on each one of these. So metamerism, if you want the best metamerism recipe, it will show that one for F2 or, or A, or color constancy, or sensitivity, which is how sensitive that recipe is to change per amount of change in dye stuff. Uh, dye stuff compatibility index, that is... Um, set up for how compatible the dyes are together and you can sort on that and you can set that up yourself um, by price maybe you want the least expensive uh, recipe um, you can uh, click on that to sort by that okay and if you want to go back to the original how it came into the recipe you could right click and reset sort order and that will reset it to how it came in uh, when you initially formulate it also there, you can right-click, and you can mail this table. So say I wanted to mail these results to someone else so they could do some dyings to match what I was doing. Uh, you could mail that table. Okay. Um, you could also do a theoretical reflectance, which means you just create a reflectance curve from these dye, this dye combination, and uh, you could send that to your... Um, your customer and see if they like this combination better than another one. You could send a couple theoretical re reflectances and they could tell you which formula you would want to go with. Okay, so uh, that's nice. So each recipe, you can click on the trial here uh, to highlight which one you want, or if you wanted more than one trial, you could right click and you could add trial. And you could maybe select two recipes to store as well. And if you click on each one of the uh, dye stuff uh, amounts here, it highlights the recipes over uh, the dyes over on the left hand side and the amounts. So if we click on one, three here, it's recipe one with three dyes. So each one of these recipes has uh, three dyes. You see the three dyes in parentheses. And then down below you have the. Uh, 
color display for D65 and F2. So now well, let's say we wanted to save these two recipes. So we click on Save. And at this point, we can give it a name, uh, Cherry, and just first trial. Okay. Um, do we want to save this recipe? We probably do, so we can correct it later on. But first, we want to browse to maybe pick our customer, maybe Red Bull Dyers. Okay, and that way we'll know who this recipe is for, and it could carry along its uh, proper criteria that you need. And we do yes. And then at this point, we've got a trial list. So we've got both recipes here. So if we wanted to show both these recipes or print them, we could even send them to a dispenser to be dyed, um, send them to ASCII file. We could email these two recipes to someone as well. Okay, So let's show these recipes. We click on Show. It will bring up the recipes. And, and what's important here is to note for the lab process, where we saw that on the formulation page, we have, uh, we have some instructions like padding temperature here. And we also have, we have our dyes, but also included is our chemicals. So Leonil SRP, our amounts of chemicals. And we can put in a formula so that it picks the right amount of chemical to add at the time. And then we have soda ash, uh, another chemical, and it, it will pick the right amount based on the amount of dyes in a recipe. Okay, so we click, so that's fine. And we could go to our next recipe. If we click the arrow over here, we go to our second recipe, and it tells us our amounts that it's added in. And then also, if we were pipetting out, it can tell us the amount of grams of the dyes to put in or milliliters of liquid dye stuff. Um, to put in the recipe if we we're making that recipe. Okay, so if we close here and then we close here, it will put that recipe uh, at the top of the list here because it's the most recently modified. Okay, and let's say we've dyed that recipe now and we go to first trial, cherry, and we go to um, lab correction, so F6. We can use a hotkey, F6, to get there. And we'll do pass-fail correction. Now we picked uh, recipe number one of two to correct. Um, and at this point, we can, we can measure in how it came out from our first dying. Um, or we can browse. And we can select our K. K, cherry. And go OK. So we see our color difference here is 0.56. Now that's pretty close. It's batches accepted. So uh, we could just approve this recipe and be done and send that on to the customer. But, or we could try to get this recipe a little bit closer. So if we clicked on Laboratory, what it will do is it will save a smart match point and give us a smart match recipe. Also included here is an additive and multiply recipe. Uh, the additive recipe uses just the primaries to make an add, and the multiply recipe uses the additive recipe, but also takes into account the performance factors for each of the dyes. So how did the dyes perform compared to the primaries? And it uses those performance factors when it does the correction. Okay. So once we pick the recipe that we want to save, and usually if there is a smart match recipe, that's the one that we'd like to save. So we'll click on the Save button. And do, do you want to save this recipe? Yes. And again, at this point, we can you know, show this recipe or both recipes. Uh, we can show this recipe, print it, dispense it, or email it. So let's show it. And it shows the recipe as it is um, with the chemicals. So now we can close and close again. And now we have our recipe first trial. But if we highlight it, we can right click and look at the history. So we've got our first dying and then our second dying um, listed there. Okay. So we can close and uh, that gives you a pretty good overview of matching your first shade and doing a correction.